Now we'll go to 10F, authorize the city manager to execute contracts with Godby Research in the amount up to $40,000 and McGovern Consulting in the amount up to $75,000 to conduct a voter opinion survey and public education related to a potential voter initiative to amend Ordinance 1284 within the City of San Bruno Transit Corridor's planned area and adopt budget amendment appropriating $115,000 to the general fund planning budget. Through the chair. Michael. Um, I have some very strong opinions on this, but uh, the law requires me to recuse myself from this topic because my primary residence is within 500 feet of the project area. Uh, to the chair, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'll just echo what uh, Councilmember Salazar said. Uh, I'm also within the 500 feet, and uh, I've been told by our city attorney that I need to recuse myself on this matter. All right. Mark, just for clarification, if, so, if uh, one of the council members has a strong opinion, they can address uh, the council at the podium as a citizen? Absolutely. The uh, law allows the <laughs> recused council members to uh, return to the room during the public comment uh, portion uh, before the city council makes a decision and to make whatever public statements they, they wish as a member of the public and then leave the room until after the uh, conclusion of the item. All right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, the purpose of this agenda item is to seek City Council authorization as allowed by state law to fund voter opinion research and public education in advance of considering whether to place a proposed voter initiative on the upcoming November 5th, 2013 ballot to amend San Bruno Ordinance 1284. And it's important to note that the City Council needs to make a decision regarding placing this measure on that ballot by August 9th of this year. Use of professional public opinion specialists to assist with determining whether and when to place an initiative of this nature on a ballot is, is very standard. And in fact, was done in 2001 when a similar ballot initiative for Measure E for the crossing mixed-use development was successfully placed on a ballot. The crossing is now a 20-acre mixed-use development is, that is now mostly built out. Ordinance number 1284 was adopted by the City Council in 1977. It prohibits buildings higher than three stories or 50 feet in height, construction of multi-story parking structures, increasing densities within districts that were zoned residential in 1974 or development within designated scenic corridors unless approved by a majority of the voters of the city of San Bruno. Earlier this year on February 12th, after several years of effort and thorough review, the San Bruno City Council adopted the transit corridors plan with a principal goal of promoting much needed economic development and investment and revitalization within San Bruno's downtown and commercial areas associated with portions of San Mateo Avenue, Huntington Avenue, El Camino Real, and San Bruno Avenue. The Transit Corridors Plan establishes development standards and design guidelines to support both public and private improvements in this area and to facilitate the economic development investment and revitalization of this area. The vision for the Transit Corridors Plan area is modern, compact development form, not unlike the crossing development, with new height limits, adequate parking, mixed land uses linked for pedestrians and bicyclists to BART and the new Caltrain stations, and to the downtown with a broad range of housing, retail, and professional office opportunities. To fully implement this vision, the Transit Corridors Plan Development Standards and Design Guidelines call for new building heights, ranging from four to seven stories in specified locations, increasing residential densities on approximately 
44 parcels within this plan area, and for above ground parking garages. Again, these standards and guidelines are proposed only within the specified areas of the city's commercial and downtown corridors within the transit corridors plan area. It was acknowledged by the City Council with the approval of the Transit Corridors Plan that a ballot measure would need to be approved by the voters of San Bruno and that the City's zoning code would need to be updated to incorporate the development standards and design guidelines of the Transit Corridors Plan to fully implement the vision of that plan. And at the time of the adoption of the Transit Corridors Plan, the City Council directed staff to explore placing a ballot measure on the upcoming municipal election to allow the voters of the city of San Bruno to consider amending Ordinance 1284 to enable the full implementation of the corridor's plan and its primary goals and vision. Consequently, staff has prepared a request for proposals, an RFP, and it's been distributed to qualified public opinion and polling consultants to assist the city with public education and to determine whether and when to place an initiative on a ballot. The team of Godby Research and McGovern Consulting and the team of The Next Generation and EMC Research Services responded to the, to the staff's RFP. The Godby McGovern team proposed a more comprehensive approach to determining voter sentiment on this important matter. Using more telephone surveys as well as focus groups to obtain this information during the informational non-advocacy stage of determining whether and when to place an initiative on the ballot. In addition, Godby McGovern was the team that provided public opinion and polling assistance during the successful 2001 Crossing Measure E ballot measure. Accordingly, the staff is recommending this evening to the City Council to go forward and authorize the City Manager to execute contracts with Godby Research in the amount of up to $40,000 and McGovern Consulting in the amount of $75,000 to conduct a voter opinion survey and public educational outreach related to a potential voter initiative to amend Ordinance 1284 within the San Bruno Transit Corridors Plan area and adopt a budget amendment appropriating $115,000 for this effort to the general fund planning budget. Staff anticipates these funds will come from sales tax, which is about $150,000 above the current year budget amount of $6.85 million. That concludes my report. I'd be happy to respond to any of your questions. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Irene. Thank you. I realized that Godby and McGovern uh, were very successful in 2001 along with all the efforts of, of the residents of San Bruno who supported the uh, amendment or the sp specific plan for the Navy site. Um, however, we were not so successful in 2006 uh, with the same team. and. In my opinion, part of, a part of why we weren't so successful, or maybe we were over, um, overconfident because of some of the results that got be, mm -hmm. um, got. <laughs> Let's see. I think, I think we need to, or they need to outreach, um, more extensively than they did in 2006. Um, here it says up to 400 total voters. I think it should be at least 400 total voters. I don't know if you can change the contract at this point, but up to is, it needs to be at least. And also the um, focus groups. We did focus groups in 2006. They were very concerned and interested residents who happened to be very supportive also of what we were trying to do at the time. So uh, unfortunately, the information I think got skewed one, you know, in more positive ways than was realistic. So I think we need to look at how those, or they need to look at how those focus groups 
um, or conducted or if we should have those kinds of focus groups. Um, in, in general, I support the, the concepts and what we need to be doing. Ken, anything? Yeah. Um, I, I echo what uh, the Vice Mayor says. We were here and um, you cannot, the success of the crossing uh, cannot be compared with this, in my, in my estimation. Uh, yes, it's a similar, it's the same ordinance, uh, but there's different players. And if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we know who the, you know, we know who the opposition is. Mm -hmm. uh, we sat here during those hearings and we have some very concerned citizens. Uh, you can, you know, and I'm very much in favor of the transit quarters plan. And everything you say and everything that was explained as far as how it's going to transform the city and benefit this city is fine. But we have opposition because we have, we have residents who are envisioning seven stories in their backyard. So I think we need to really concentrate on that. Uh, because before you know it, if, they, if, if we're not addressing them, they will get their supporters and we're not, we're not positioned for a fight. Uh, we can't campaign, you know, alongside being, you know, possibly also campaigning, you know, for, you know, for a seat up here. Uh, so we don't have a lot of options other than to be very honest, uh, be very f upfront uh, with the public and let them know that uh, what we're doing is, uh, is, is something that they can trust. Mm -hmm. With that said, I mean, I don't really think, I mean, we've, we've gotten this far with the transit quarters plan. We have to put it up for a vote, mm -hmm. whether or not God be in the say it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a slim chance. Mm -hmm. um, I, first time I heard that Gabi was involved, you know, half cent sales tax and they, they told us 77%, you know, of the community would, would vote for it, you know, and we lost under 50%, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's their fault that they, you know, uh, surveyed the wrong people or didn't get the right type of survey. Uh, but I think we really need, to, we can't take these things for granted. We need to really go towards, you know, go for the, the people that we know the residents that we know who are, you know, who would possibly more than likely vote no on it. Mm -hmm. I also agree with what Irene said regarding the uh, at least uh, 400 has to be, you know, at least 400 or more. Mm -hmm. And the focus groups have to be very, very focused this time because uh, we have to sit these people down and let them know exactly what we're thinking about, what we're planning, and the potential of what would happen in their neighborhoods and that we're in, we don't have the intention uh, of putting seven stories right behind their, their homes. That's not, not what we're after. So it has to be explained uh, very, very um, slowly and very concisely. So I, I agree with the recommendation, but um, God be and McGovern both have to understand uh, where we're coming from because this is a very serious uh, situation, in fact, for the future of, of San Bruno. We have a lot of plans that uh, It'll make this a much better city um, than it already is. But mm -hmm. uh, the people have to understand. It's the people that, that are living there that live with this day to day, and they have to understand through these groups and focus groups and outreach that you know we're serious about preserving their their uh, their lifestyle also. So um, it doesn't say it right here, but this is we are asking for a resolution. Um, and this, would someone like to introduce that? Mr. Oh. Mayor, may I may I comment? Um, first of all, uh, the the agenda does not uh, properly identify that there is a resolution to document your action, although um, the action as identified on the agenda is complete with respect to uh, the staff's recommendation. I just wanted to comment, though, quickly on the on the uh, concerns that the city council has, uh, in my opinion, rightfully. Um, identified. The uh, staff um, did take the opportunity of a very, um, shall we say, um, focused conversation uh, with the Godby and McGovern team to 
illuminate and to uh, dive into these the precise issues that the City Council has articulated. While there are no guarantees in either the work that will be performed or its result, um, I, I can assure you that the team has had the opportunity to clearly understand the um, uh, appropriate reservations of the City Council in this regard, and they have responded, um, in my view, with a thoughtful approach to particularly to the polling as well as to the pre-election uh, educational outreach. Um, in particular, what ultimately impressed staff uh, with the team's approach was both the relatively more uh, number of voters to be surveyed, and we will certainly make sure that the number, as uh, Vice Mayor O'Connell has identified, is at least 400 and not um, not, not less than 400, um, it, but also with this uh, concept of focus groups, we, we did carefully discuss the issue of a um, scientific selection of individuals to participate in the focus groups as opposed to um, identification of persons who may have been involved or may be knowledgeable about this topic, which, which you probably really want is people who don't already know very much about it. And uh, to be able, therefore, to test uh, both what type of educational outreach might be useful to the formulation of a, of a thoughtful opinion by members of the public. Um, but secondly, uh, the, the team did clearly identify to us that their approach will be to fully analyze and vet a number of different alternatives, both about the timing as well as the content of a ballot measure. So there is no foregone conclusion, while ultimately for the Transit Corridor plan to be implemented successfully, a ballot measure is necessary and it is necessary that it be successful. Um, the polling and the pre-education, educa pre-election educational outreach doesn't presume anything about when a ballot measure might be brought forward or exactly how that will be articulated. That is a, a, the purpose of the polling and we consider it highly essential to be able to correctly and thoroughly inform and advise the city council about this very important decision. So while they will be looking at the possibility of a November ballot measure, they will also be looking at the potential for the need uh, for additional education or different types of education that the city may be recommended to undertake prior to a ballot measure uh, being presented to the voters. So I hope that that information is at least useful to addressing, if not alleviating, uh, the concerns. Uh, the City Council will also have um, full opportunity to address these issues uh, straight on with the consultants as we move forward through this process, should you uh, determine tonight to move forward. Yeah, if, if I could. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask if there was going to be any advice and strategy and, you know, and ballot Ballot, even ballot language. Instead. That is uh, uh, that is the portion that uh, is the essential part of the um, uh, McGovern Consulting part of this team. Um, Godby Associates will provide the data. Um, uh, McGovern, uh, in conjunction with uh, Godby as well as with yourselves, will devise um, a strategy for education of the public and for the timing of the election. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have members of the public like to speak on this. All right, state your name and street. My name is uh, Michael Salazar. I live on Reed Avenue and I have a brief comment for the council tonight. Um, I, I know that this is a, an important effort, uh, part of a grander scheme, and um, 
the only issue I wanted to raise is that I do have a fundamental problem with using the uh, taxpayers' dollars to um, pursue a, an effort that might appear to be almost manipulation of, of a vote because it, it would tend to try to influence um, a, an agenda. And, uh, and I know ultimately it, it probably would benefit the city to move in that direction, but using a significant amount of, of public funds for that means, to me, it just doesn't seem um, the best use of those funds. And I also wonder if, um, regardless of what uh, consultant's opinion might be at the end of the day, if that would really have a material effect on what the council is going to do, because um, I, I think that the, the direction has already been set and certain things have to happen. And whether or not that opinion comes back favorable or non-favorable, would that really change your opinions or the direction that the city's already heading in. And for that, uh, for that um, consideration, I, I, would, uh, I would ask you to, to reconsider spending that amount of money if uh, it's really not gonna affect ultimately what you end up doing. Thank you. Thank you. If I may, Mr. Mayor, through the chair, yes, I just Mark. wanted to address briefly uh, Mr. Salazar's comment about the use of public funds because that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely, of course. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, that's, this is an issue that the uh, California state courts uh, feel is very important, and fortunately, uh, they have uh, decided a number of significant cases that inform uh, how uh, public funds are spent in the education and information leading up to a ballot measure. And the law in California is that while public funds cannot be used to campaign in favor of or in opposition to a measure, public funds can be used and have been routinely used by public entities to inform and educate the public regarding the uh, nature and the effect of those ballot measures. And there are a number of cases that we're thoroughly familiar with, uh, as I'm informed, are the consultants, and we intend to scrupulously follow California case law with respect to making sure that all of the city's efforts using public funds are done solely for the purposes of informing and educating the, the public. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. uh, so regarding the resolution, that I know there's a resolution in the packet, but not on the agenda. Can we just make a motion, Mark? No, we understand that, that the actual language adopting a resolution isn't in the, in the title, okay. but it is in the staff report, and the title does give fair notice that, uh, that an action would be taken to authorize the city manager to do that, and the usual way of doing that is via resolution. So I think you can go ahead. Okay. Someone like to introduce that resolution? I'll introduce. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Vice Mayor O'Connell. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. 